Hello everybody, this is Jaron and Brett from marineandreef.com. Today we're doing a video about RO systems and for the point of illustration, we're in the warehouse with our office RO system that makes water for all of our planted tanks and reef tanks here um, at Marine and Reef. Um, we're going to start out by trying to go over basically what is an RO system, why would you even want one in the first place, then go over some of the details, how does it work, and then beyond that, um, why are there $100 RO systems and $500 RO systems? What's the difference? If you have a cheap one, how can you make it better? And kind of some of the upgrades you may want to go with. Um, the interesting thing is, I know Brett's actually in the market for an RO system now. So when we decided to first start talking about um, why you'd want an RO system, Brett, why do you want one? I want an RO system just because, honestly, I am very tired of going to my local fish store and hauling around the five gallon jugs um, on a weekly basis. But it also, it does allow me to do more maintenance on my own tanks just because of the ease of it being right in front of me. Um, just lower maintenance cost and um, just cleaner water. You know, it, basically your water just gets worse from, from fish waste, but also from things like heavy metals. Every additive you add has some trace amount of that. And if you never pull it out, just gonna keep on building up. And the most common way you remove that is from a water change. You do a water change, but if the water you put back in after you took the dirty water out- It's still dirty. It's still dirty, then you're at a disadvantage. It's gonna make your life a whole lot harder. So um, practically what this means for me is when I set up my first reef tank, the store I went to said, oh, tap water's fine. You don't need to worry about mm -hmm. that. And I just had horrible, horrible algae. I had hair algae, had cyanobacteria, had diatom algae. And I went to another store and they said, don't do that, use an RO system. And as soon as I switched to RO water, started sucking out and doing the water changes, it got way better. Uh, almost and, like um, overnight. Yeah, and for this reason, I would never recommend anybody run a reef tank ever without using RODI water. Just with the strong, intense lights, any nutrients in your tap water can give you bad problems. And then with my planted tank at home, I started on out and I started with RO water. Now, and I started with RO water because it had a reef tank first, and it seemed like all the experts said that was what to do. But I kept that tank actually at my church for the little kids to see. I got really tired of hauling water to, to, to my church. It was like 30 gallons of water for the water change. I said, no, what if I just switch to tap water? And the biggest thing I noticed with my planted tank is the plant growth rate just about cut in half. Now, the plants didn't die, fish didn't die, but man, you could tell the plants like the RO water a lot more. So it's up to you. And kind of like Brett mentioned, he's tired of hauling the buckets. That's what got me to stop using the RO water is I was tired of hauling water from my house with my RO system to my church to do it. And you know, maybe I need to consider putting a second <laughs> RO system so I can actually do those water changes with the RO water. Um, so, you know, part of the home RO system is you don't have to haul the buckets. Part of it is you're not paying for the water continually over time. And um, part of it's emergencies. You know, before this, you're saying, what if it's Christmas and your fish are dying and you need to do a water change and the fish store is closed, how are you gonna get your RO water for your water change? Well, yeah. You have to wait. Yeah, you have to wait. But if you have your own RO system, you can make water at any time. It's just good for planning that you have that. Um, so without further ado, we're going to look at the system here. This is our office RO system. This actually started as a basic unit, and then we upgraded it with all kinds of different little upgrades, which we'll address at the end. And basically, if you're wondering why are there cheap RO systems and expensive RO systems, essentially the cheap RO systems come with the basics, and the expensive RO systems have a lot of the upgrades we're going to point on out already added, and you're paying for that, but those upgrades are there for a reason. Um, so the first thing any RO system is going to do is it's going to go through a sediment filter, which is what we have here. And basically a sediment filter is going to do just what it sounds like. It's going to filter out sediment. It's going to catch debris. It starts out nice and white, and you can see as this one, it's starting to get some brown in there. And that's because it catches sediment and debris. We don't want that going into our tank. But most importantly with an RO system, what we'll learn is basically each preceding filter is protecting the next filter. Um, we could get completely pure water with just the very last step, the DI resin, but we'd be spending a ton of money because he'd blow through it pretty much every time he made water. So this is going to catch debris, it keeps it out, but it also preserves the filters to come after it. Um, the next stage you got is a carbon filter. We have one right here and right here. Your basic setups are going to have one. This one has been upgraded to have two. 
and we'll address why you'd want to later. The carbon filter is going to remove a lot of things. Just like carbon in your aquarium, it'll remove organics, or remove odors, tannins. The most important thing it's removing in this case is chlorine. And by far that is the single most important thing. And that's because the next stage, which is the actual RO membrane, is doing most of the work and chlorine will absolutely destroy the RO membrane. So your carbon filter, sediment filter, our filters are commonly $10 or less in price. There's some higher end ones that are a bit more that last longer, but the membranes range in price from you know, 40 to $80. So if you don't replace these and your membrane dies, uh, then you're gonna wish you did. So this is one of the reasons why we recommend swapping these filters out every six months. And there's a few other things we can show you about how to swap them out later, but it's very important so that your membrane lasts, which is far more expensive. So you can kind of follow the water here. Water goes in through our carbons. After the carbon is going to go through this canister up top, which is your RO membrane. And this is going to do most of the heavy lifting of your water purification. Um, generally, when the water comes out of the RO membrane, it's going to be between 95 and 97 percent pure. Um, most of those um, impurities are going to be removed, and not quite all. And this is really all that's required for freshwater tanks. So sediment, carbon, and membrane. These are known as RO systems. This is an RODI system, which has one additional stage, which we'll address next. Uh, one thing to note is with these RO membranes, you can kind of see we have water coming in through this side here. Then we have two lines. You have this blue line and this black line. The blue line is the clean water, which goes into the DI later, and this black line is the dirty water. Um, a lot of people who buy RO systems comment, there's dirty water, and yes, there is dirty water. So part of how an RO system works is it concentrates all the waste it pulls out into the dirty water. So you do have to have a place to run your dirty water, not just supply your clean water. This can be down the drain, or it could be into your yard, because plants tend to like the dirty water. Um, or it could be um, into a, a watering can if you want to water house plants or whatnot. After the RO membrane, we have DI resin. In this case, we have two canisters of DI resin. Um, you really only need one, and we'll address why you might want two later, is that affects upgrades and some of the price. The DI resin is going to give the RO a final polish, taking it from that 95, 97% pure to just about as close to 100% pure as you can get. It's going to be 99.9, .9, most manufacturers claim. It's very, very, very pure water. It's the same water you use in a lab performing experiments. Um, and this final polish is very important for reef tanks. Um, many people notice that when they don't replace these and use just the RO with the reef tank, they do get some of the algae coming back. So we want to make sure these are working. So Jaren, this all looks really cool, but what is this gauge? do like what is it for and what is this little meter here for so these are some of the common upgrades you're going to see in ro systems some of the more expensive systems we sell are going to have the pressure gauge and our tds meter here and if your system doesn't have it you can always add it on later and that's actually what we did here so to demonstrate these we're actually going to make some water um, in this case we have a cap with a float valve on it we're going to stick it in our bucket we use to make salt water. Um, when you address some of the upgrades like the float valve, the TDS meter, and the pressure gauge, I'm going to say the most important upgrade anybody could add to any RO system is this little float valve. Um, Aquatic Life makes a float valve kit. Basically what this float valve is going to do is when you first buy an RO system, most people think, oh, I'll just put the hose in my bucket and then I'll remember to turn it off. Um, I had thought that and then I flooded my house, lose the wife acceptance points, you know, you get some warped boards and whatnot because you had some water spills. And it makes you really realize how a $20 float valve kit is something worth getting. So this float valve kit is going to include your float valve which actually turns off the output water. And then the other two pieces included in the kit are the auto shut off valve and the check valve. Those work together to actually turn off the wastewater. So if you were to just add the float valve and not these other two pieces, what winds up happening is the clean water stops coming out, but the dirty water just keeps going down the drain. And um, you're still gonna waste water, it's not gonna flood, but we don't want that. So we do recommend you get the kit with all three pieces and not just the float valve when you're doing this. So let's go ahead and make some water. So we have our float valve mounted in this cap. 
Just gonna push it in, screw down the cap. And we have a series of valves here. So we're gonna turn on the water supply. And then we're gonna turn on the water coming out here and we're making water. So now that where water is going, we can address the pressure gauge. What the pressure gauge measures is the water pressure going into the RO membrane. So it turns out most of the problems people are gonna have with an RO membrane itself are pressure related. The pressure's not right, it's not gonna work, it's not gonna be purifying your water right. So um, yeah. what, what happens if I live in an area and we have very, very low water pressure? Yeah, so first off, what kind of water pressure do you want? So on the pressure gauge is going to be marked. It's going to have um, the gauge saying is it 20 psi, 40 psi, 60 psi. Most manufacturers are going to say you're going to want a minimum of 50 psi to run your RO system. Um, if you have 20 or something way less than that, you just get the bad luck of that area. There's no reason you shouldn't buy a booster pump. You're going to see so much of a performance benefit from that booster pump that it's just a no-brainer. And the booster pump is an upgrade. Some systems, like the ice cap RO systems, include it. Um, but it'll give you a significant performance benefit if you have low water pressure. And even if you don't, it's still going to give you a performance benefit. Because it's expensive, it's usually one of the last things I'd upgrade. But we've obviously upgraded it here. Um, this booster pump we're showing off here is um, an aquatic life unit. This is by far the easiest booster pump to install I've ever dealt with. Um, a lot of the others have a whole lot of connections. This has six connections, which seems a bit complicated, but basically it's your supply water in, supply water out, dirty water in, dirty water out, clean water in, clean water out. You know, every RO hose goes in and out, and mm -hmm. it has it clearly labeled, pictured right below, makes it very simple to install. Um, the next reason you really want to look at the pressure gauge when you buy a new RO system, the pressure gauge will read some good number usually, assuming you have proper water pressure. Say it reads 60 PSI above what people would recommend. Well then when you come back to it, you're going to notice it's going to slowly go down in pressure. And what's happening is as the sediment filter and carbon filters build up with gunk, less pressure is reaching your RO membrane and that's a sign you need to swap out those filters. If you notice that that gauge goes down, first reaction is swap out your pre-filters. Um, if your unit doesn't have a pressure gauge, you can always add one with this SpectraPure kit. Um, and you'll notice again that some of the higher end RO systems include the pressure gauge. So it's something you can add. And if you're wondering why a system is more expensive, check if it has a pressure gauge. It has some extra costs associated with it. Um, so the pressure gauge basically lets you know the membrane is getting the water supply it needs to be functioning right. Make sure that these two cartridges aren't clogged up and limiting it. The TDS meter you asked about is um, a different way of checking the system performance. So a lot of people wonder, you know, the tap water is clear, the RO water is clear, the, the dirty water from your RO system is clear. How do you actually know it's good water? And uh, that's basically what the TDS meter is for. Um, the TDS meter measures the total dissolved solids in your water. So without this, you really have no idea if actual good water is coming out of your system. And that's why it is one of the first things I'd upgrade is the TDS meter. Um, with a meter like this, it's a dual meter. So it's measuring at this point and at this point. At the first point, which is out of the membrane, we can see we're getting nine TDS. I mentioned earlier, generally the membrane is supposed to remove between um, 95 and 97 percent of the, the bad stuff in the water. Um, I've actually used a pen meter to measure the TDS in our tap, and it's about 850 now, and we're getting um, 9 TDS coming out. So that's um, over a 95 percent rejection, which is about what we would expect. About 95 percent of the solids, the salts, the waste, the calcium, the ammonia are removed after the RO system. But you can see we still have some bleeding through to this DI stage. And out of the DI stage, reading the second port, it's coming out zero. Again, the main reason why this is important is if you notice there's a whole bunch of algae in your tank, you can test the tank water. But what if the water you're putting in is dirty again? And there's really no way to know that other than the TDS meter, which is why I'd recommend it. And you'll find the more expensive RO systems already include one to let you know that it's working. So one thing we mentioned was that the system behind us has two carbon blocks and two DI cartridges. And I want to explain why you'd want that. And um, contrary to what a lot of people think, 
it mainly isn't a performance benefit, it's actually a money saving benefit. So we showed you guys earlier how we had the TDS meter which measures how pure the water is. Well, the DI cartridges, um, in this case, which are doing most of that final polish, really getting things clean, they work kind of like a battery. So if you're like me, you have a lot of flashlights, and you notice when you turn the flashlight on, it starts out really bright, but then as it gets older, it still turns on, but it's dim. And then if you're like me, you always question, do I want to run the battery to death, or do I want to swap it out so I have that bright light again? Well, that's kind of what this is kind of fixing by having two cartridges. We want the water to read zero TDS and be completely pure. But what a lot of people find is, um, in this case, we're getting nine TDS out of the RO. What if we get four or five out of the DI? Now, the DI is still removing a lot of that waste, but it's just not all of it. Well, if you have a single DI cartridge, basically, you kind of just got to throw away that DI cartridge, even though it has a little bit of life left in it, and replace it, because we want the zero TDS water for the reef aquarium. If you have two DI cartridges, like we have here, what you can do is when you notice that the resin inside this cartridge is changing and pretty close to exhausted, you can keep on running it until the resin has completely changed color or until your TDS meter says that the value coming out of it equals what's coming out of your RO membrane. And then what you do is you take your second cartridge, move it to the first position, and then put a fresh cartridge in the second. And basically what you've done is you've used that first cartridge all the way to completion. We've totally maximized it and we're not throwing away that little bit of good resin in the cartridge in the end. So when people see this, sometimes they think they're going to replace twice as many cartridges. We're actually going to replace fewer cartridges and maximize the life. Um, anyone who knows that they have really dirty water or who just doesn't want to spend money on cartridges, this is a great setup to help it last a bit longer. It's kind of a similar thing with your carbon blocks. Um, thing about carbon blocks is you really want no chlorine ever getting through your carbon blocks or it'll trash your membrane. There's not a very good way to know when these carbon blocks are bad. You can test the chlorine and see if chlorine shows up, but if you find chlorine showing up, it means it's already damaging your membrane. So what a lot of people like doing with these two carbon blocks is again, you're still going to replace one carbon block every six months just like you would otherwise but we're gonna do the same thing what we did with the DI resins. We're gonna get rid of the first one, which is probably all exhausted, move the second one to the first slot, and place our new cartridge in the second slot. And that'll make sure that we always have a full cartridge, but we're also maximizing by eliminating that first cartridge at once. So again, you're not gonna buy two carbon blocks when it comes time to replacement. You're still gonna buy one. It's just gonna help you get a little bit more life out of them and preserve the life of your membrane. So, Jaron, I am in the market for an RO system. You know, I do have a couple of different tanks. I do have a, a pretty big freshwater tank and then some smaller uh, saltwater tanks as well. Um, now, my question for you is, out of these RO units, because they're all still pretty new to me, which one would you recommend for my lifestyle? Well, like you said, the first question we'll ask anybody if they're thinking about an RO unit is what do you want to use it for? Are you wanting to make reef water? Are you wanting to make water for your planted tank? Are you wanting to drink some of the water too? And all these effects, which unit's right for you? The biggest thing is whether you want an RO unit or an RO DI unit, which is a unit with that extra DI cartridge. And for fresh water, there's really not much benefit from adding the DI, so we recommend you stick with the regular RO unit. But for a reef tank, you're gonna want the DI. So in your case where you have both, we're gonna recommend a unit with the DI. You can use the DI water for your fresh water tank, or what we see a lot of customers do is They'll use some of the plumbing parts that we sell to put a T in between so that they can make water that's just RO or they can make water that's RODI. Um, same thing if you want to drink your water, you shouldn't be drinking DI water. It's so pure that it scientists actually say it's bad for you, but drinking the RO water is fine. So using some of those plumbing fittings to allow you to make RO water and your DI water separate will let you make water for both applications. Okay. Now, um, Brett, how much water do you think you typically make in a given week? Roughly, I would say right around 30 to 40 gallons. 30 to 40 gallons. So one thing we ask people is there are different styles of RO system. There are systems like this RO Buddy that use these small compact cartridges. Um, these are very, very affordable and they're a great way for people to get into RO systems without spending a fortune. Um, there's also systems like the twist-in systems next to it by Aquatic Life. These have actually been some of our best-selling systems. 
Their cartridges are going to be a little bit more high capacity, but they're still not quite as high capacity as the traditional RO cartridges which we showed behind you. So judging by how much water you plan on making per week, we can decide if one of these two options is the best choice for you. I think the RO Buddy would actually be a good option for you. The one thing that would make me go to the twist in versus the Buddy is even though the twist in is a little bit more expensive, um, in my experience it's the least likely kind of cartridge to leak. Um, these twist in cartridges, you don't even have to turn off the water, you simply rotate the cartridges in and out. Whereas something like these big canisters require a specialized wrench, you're going to have to turn off the water, there's almost always some dripping and leaking which is a hassle. Um, it may be worth it if you're making a lot of water and you want the high-end cartridges, but if you're like, no, the easier something is to do, the more I'm gonna do it, I don't want any headaches, um, the twist inception systems like this are a great option for you. All right, Jaren, so just to summarize everything that we went over here today, uh, with these RO units, a DI system is mainly for reef tanks, yep. and an RO system is gonna be mainly for fresh water or even, as you said, drinking water. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so we do have the two carbon blocks, and the reason why you want to have two carbon blocks is so that way you're not pretty much throwing away money when once only at like 5% health, if you will. Yeah, if it's still working, we don't want to throw it away. Exactly, okay. And then the DEI, you said the DEI, it's always good to have redundancy like that, so that way the water is extremely clean. It's extremely clean, but also like you said with the carbon, if it's still removing something, we don't want to throw it away, we want to get it out, and you actually save money with two DIs or two carbons. Okay, and then as for water pressure, we did go over the pressure gauge. It is important, and what is the correct level that you'd want your water pressure to be at? So the RO system's not gonna function right um, if the pressure is below 50 PSI. If you have a new system and it's below 50 PSI, you need to buy a booster pump. Your system won't work properly without extra pressure. And of course, you wouldn't know that unless you actually had it. No, you wouldn't know it unless you had it. You can't add it. It is something the higher end systems have. The other thing is if you notice a decline in the pressure, it's a sign you need to replace these filters because they're clogging up. Yeah, that's always good to know. Um, and then as for the TDS meter, we went over that on how that would kind of tell you how clean your water is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's very important because at the end of the day, I mean, you are wasting a lot of water to produce your clean water. You want to make sure your clean water is clean. Yeah, you want to make sure your clean water is going in. If you have any algae problems, one of your first questions is, is my RO system working? There's really not a way to know it's working without a TDS meter. Yeah, the last thing you want to be doing is pumping your tank with dirty water. Yeah, you don't want to be doing that at all. Thank you very much for watching. We definitely appreciate it. If you have any other questions regarding a reverse osmosis system, how to pick one, how to use one, feel free to reach on out to sales at marineandreef.com as an email address so we can answer your questions. One of the most common questions we get is how do you connect your RO system? And honestly, that's a big enough conversation. We're going to save it for a later video. To summarize it for those who are wanting a quick answer, if you're comfortable with basic plumbing, it really isn't that difficult at all. There's lots of videos already out there. We'll make our own that's even easier to follow, um, as well as some manuals with the RO systems themselves showing you how to do it. If you're not comfortable with plumbing at all, it may be something worth hiring a plumber to install or even a handy friend to come on over and do for you. Thank you very much and hope to hear from you soon.